them has a deep level producing mine called Zonda Ender, which is near Rustenburg and also owns a huge prospect, Boysendal, on the eastern limb of the Bushveld complex. Yeah, interesting. Although they recently did a deal to buy some mineral rights from Anglo American, which has actually extended the life of Zonda Ender for a substantial amount of time. So that's encouraging news, too. Market cap 25.1 billion Rand pays no PE, but uh, also paying no dividends. Yep. No surprise. I'm surprised by that, actually, though. Oh, because you are surprised. Yeah. Now, I'll take my uh, producer's word for it, but uh, they are one of those that has had a more steady profile in terms of its earnings. Well, yeah. let's check in on the share price graph. Yeah, there no, you, you go. See it doesn't it's look too much bad. better. Bit of a hacksaw blade, but it goes up at the end. That's what counts. Chris? Well, what are they doing uh, as compared to the other platinum mines? I think, you know, and you mentioned it briefly, that it's Boysendal. That has been the, the flavor of the decade, I suppose, in, in platinum mining circles. And um, we just haven't seen it being able to be to, to fully exploiting that. I mean, they, they've only recently started uh, you know, mining that thing properly. So I think um, a lot of faith in this one. Mm. Yeah, look, Paul Dunn, who is the CEO of Northam, is an ex-Impala chap, and he's very highly regarded in the industry. The story here always was Zonderander, which is where Opikopi is out there in Northam, north of Sun City. It was an asset which looked quite good, but it's sort of at the end of its lifespan. But they've taken steps, like I mentioned earlier, to extend that. Boysendal is this massive 100 million ounce resource out near Steelport, you know, down to the uh, east. And that's kind of getting now into production. They made 160,000 ounces of platinum out of it in this past year. So it's starting to look like a much more balanced producer. And I think people like the empowerment shareholding. They like the dynamic management team. And it's always had stable. Let's just run through the management yeah. teams that we've spoken about again. So Paul Dunn being the mm. CEO of Northam. Yes. Terence Goodlace is... Ex-Goldfields uh, man. Adam Parler now, but apparently tired and looking to step down. And then, and then we've Chris got Neil Froneman, who's yep. roaring ahead with Sibanyi Gold. Exactly. And Chris, Chris Griffiths, Griffiths at the health of uh, Anglo Platt also. So these are, you know, top corporate executives. They are all battle hardened. They know the AMCU shop stewards by their first names. They know the underground workings. These guys are sharp operators. Let's uh, go back to the Northern story and whether there is any incentive here for shareholders to buy into the story. Yeah, I think, Bronwyn, in this one you're buying quality and you're buying a long-term uh, quality situation with one, this one. So it's one of the few I can get uh, quite excited about. I think about. Paul Dunn is actually uh, Scottish. So that's a big Well, that plus makes all the difference. There we go. Oh. Gotta be Can't hot bet against the <laughs> Scott, can <laughs> you? Gotta be hot on that one then, eh? <laughs> We're hot, and uh, do we have a hot? Yeah, I like it. Um, and I think the extension of the Zonderende lifespan is a massive win for them, even though they had to pay a billion rand for the rights. But think about it, it's like the farm next door. But if you've got the shaft infrastructure here, you can just go underground into that new section at substantially lower capital cost. So it was always a deal that had to happen, but the Anglo-American platinum guys were just being stingy and hold out. Hot. But now it looks good, yeah. Hot, hot. hot.